So we were done with the thing. So we'll come back again. Uh, so we we were on uh, uh retain earnings. Yes. Yeah, so we were done with that. And then we are now coming on the drawings. So yes. draw, drawings is uh just the owner has uh, removed money from the business uh for their personal use. Uh, these drawings mm. be in cash, but they could also be in kind. If they're in cash, oh, so it, means, it, it means they have removed actual money from uh, the business. Then in kind, they remove inventory from the business. So if it's inventory, we value that inventory. And then uh, that is the value of the drawings. Then we, the drawings that reduce on capital, how are they treated? And normally, how are they presented here in the trial balance? So as we can see, this is how the drawings have been presented. They they are on the debit side here. So again, just yes. like the way capital is on the credit side, the mm. drawings that will reduce them are on the debit side. So drawings have a normal debit balance in our trial balance. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm trying to, to bring out here is, okay, how can I differentiate these drawings for personal use and then the drawings for business use? If you see the word drawings anywhere, those drawings yes. are usually for personal use. The word drawing is removing money from the business for personal use. We don't have any mm. drawings of business use. Oh. Yes, the word drawings is basically for accounting terms here is whenever you see it, then it means money is being removed for personal use. Maybe what I'm trying to say is, one thing I know is uh, these drawings are normally, they are, they, they, these drawings are, they are drawings that are considered expenses in the business. Then there are those ones that are also for personal use. Do we record those ones too in the books of accounts of that particular entity for personal use? We do record. If, may do one. The, the, if drawings are being taken for personal use, Remember, yes. they're already affecting because they are removing money from the business for personal use. So yes. that's why if somebody is removing money drawings, we credit mm. our cash, our business okay. cash, and debit the drawings account. Yes. But then, that, that those drawings that normally reduces on capital in the balance sheet. Those are the drawings for personal use. Oh, so but, I don't know. I don't know where I got it from. Uh, for me, I've, I've been like the drawings for business use. There are those ones for business use and then for personal use. For me, I've been differentiating. Drawing, so that's wrong. Drawings is for personal use. And the drawings oh. are treated, uh, if it's a, a journal entry, we debit the drawings and credit cash in case somebody is, is drawing cash. In case they are drawing inventory, we credit our inventory and debit drawing. So drawings have a normal those debit ones, balance. Those ones are for the drawings in kind. Y yes, where there's inventory. We credit inventory and debit the drawings account. And mm. drawings are only treated in the statement of financial position as a deduction on capital, full stop. Uh -huh. so that's what I was asking. Now, are those the same drawings that we treated this side in the in the profit or loss statement? Drawings do not go to the profit and loss statement. So I, I don't know where I'm getting confused here. They, they are those drawings you've just talked about that reduce on capital. Are they the same as these ones we are talking about? Now, this is, is not a, this one is not a statement of, uh, of, of profit or loss. This is a trial balance. A trial balance I, will, will always have all items, all accounts, despite them okay. going for the statement of financial position or statement of profit and loss, it will have everything. Mm. So drawings are here within yes. our trial balance and we move them from the trial balance to the statement of financial position. Oh, so for, we don't treat them anywhere in the profit or loss. We don't treat them anywhere in the profit and loss because drawings are neither expenses, they are not, they are not income. Profit and loss mm. looks at revenue, 
and expenses. Expenses. Mm. So they don't appear there. So I've been maybe I've been misinformed over on that. No, so I can put that. There. Yes, yes, yes. Take it from me. Yes, because for me, I've been I've been treating them as expenses. They are not. They are not. Hey, they these are ones. Not. They are not. Why they are not expenses? An expense is the business has incurred it for its operations, mm. for its day to day operations. And with the matching concept is that the expense is being incurred in generation of revenue. But drawing mm. is basically money removed from the business for the for this for the owner's personal use. There is no income mm. generation, there's no revenue generation that arises out of drawings. So drawings are not included as part of our expenses. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. So then we have uh, discounts received. Discount received mm. is an income because it is us that are receiving. The keyword here is receiving. So it mm. is an additional income. When we are, after we have gotten our gross profit, we have what we call additional income. So we, mm. we that's how we record our discounts received discount allowed is the opposite mm. it is now us who are allowing discounts to our customers so okay. discount allowed is an expense to us and this is yes. recorded under our operating expenses mm. the examiner sometimes only just brings a word and calls it discount and then mm. put something on the debit side and put something on, on the credit side. So yours is to understand that whenever I see discounts and I see a, something on the debit of my trial balance, then I should mm. have it in mind that this is an expense. If I see mm. something on the credit side under discounts, then I know that this is actually an income because incomes have a normal credit balance. Mm. And discounts will only go in the statement of profit and loss because they are income and expenses. Mm. Okay. Um, we also have uh, cash and bank balances. So uh, this is 93550 means that cash and bank are combined. So this is mm. like coming from the cash book. Mm. So this is an asset as we can see it there. We know very well that Sometimes bank can also have a credit balance where you have a the banker overdraft. And in that case, it will be a liability. But for this case, this is mm. an asset. Okay, on the same. Yes. Uh, can I ask something? It's kind of general, maybe please, not please, here. Please. Uh, the, number, the, the, the scenarios that you come up with, uh, you, you, you see, okay, you come up with a number uh, where uh, normally if you balance both the cash book, the, you normally use the cash, the cash at bank or the cash that you have at hand. But sometimes you find out that you don't have the cash or bank balances, but then you have a bank overdraft. Yes. And sometimes it's the negative, yes. So it's on the on the on the credit. So do you balance it off with that with that money? No, you don't. You don't oh. you don't you don't balance off the cash and the bank. You represent them mm. differently because when you take this to the statement of financial position, an overdraft will mm. be under your current liabilities. Well, this other cash and bank will appear under your assets. Okay, so are there scenarios where they don't uh, give you such information and then they want you to prepare a, a cash flow statement? Or, or it, it signifies that there was no money left either in the bank or, or at cash, cash at hand. If they don't give you what? Uh, if they have not given you any cash or bank balances. Yes, that means that it was actually zero. Whatever is not appearing here means that it doesn't mm. exist. Oh, 
Yes. If you don't uh, have a cash and bank balances, not. But there are some times where the examiner mm. gives you a question and puts question marks. Okay. In that, in that, that in like that case, you have to first find it. You have to find it. It exists, but they are not just giving it to you. But then, how do you how how do you find it when you don't have sources of, uh, you know, how do you find the cash or bank? Uh, they have not talked about it. Okay, if the examiner puts question marks, ideally they mm. will always provide in, information that oh, you, can, you can use to determine it. So yours is to be able to understand the scenario at hand. And see how to mm. determine it, but there should be a, there should be a way. If we we come across a similar number, it should be able to give us yeah. uh, an insight on what exactly to do. Because they normally bring in the things of either credit purchases that maybe these people were meant to pay some money on a later date, and maybe they give could be the percentages or the the the, the frequency of the, the 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 installments. Maybe sometimes. There's a question I, I came across that was of that kind. So when you say that sometimes you need to look for it, maybe we need uh, such information uh, to get the money. Uh, that's at cash or bank that we need. But for me, there's someone that told me that sometimes you can use the bank overdraft to balance off a cash, a cash flow statement. So that's when, when, we come, when we came here and we started explaining about cash and bank balances of the cash book. That came into my mind. Okay. When it comes but to okay, cash, when it comes to cash mm. flow statement, um, mm. your bank overdraft, when uh, you know cash flow statements act differently. Because uh, mm. as you prepare your cash flow statement, as you're finishing after you've gotten your net cash uh, from mm. from each of the operating uh, investment and financing now you're balancing this with uh with what you the have cash and cash yes, ca yes yes cash and cash equivalent at that point in time you can add cash and then come and subtract your bank overdraft so that mm. that is actually it. for cash flow statement is okay what i said was not okay is if you're taking this too uh the balance sheet or statement of financial position because of presentation mm -hmm. reasons you want to ensure that you're presenting your liabilities differently your assets differently but we shall also look mm -hmm. at that when we come to the cash flow statement mm -hmm. so then we have the trade receivables uh which sometimes they are called the debtors and mm -hmm. uh, the debtors have a normal debit balance, and these are people that we sold to on credit, and they are yet to pay us. Then we uh, we have the trade payables, which is the opposite. These are suppliers we bought from, who mm -hmm. are yet to pay, uh, whom we are yet to pay, basically. Now, trade receivables usually have an adjustment uh, of uh, bad debts. Yes. Yeah, for this, we shall see if at all they are there. It's just try to run through here. Yeah. So they're telling us that century on 31st December was 34 million, uh, 650,000, included 102 mm. cartons of soap at shillings, 70,000, mm. each that had almost mm. expired. Management average disposal yes. of cartons of shillings 50,000 each, which would incur a cost of 560 as commission to the salesperson. Now, they have given us the value of closing inventory, which is 34,650,000. But then they are mm. telling us that included in this is mm. 102 cartons, at a value mm. of 70,000 that had almost expired. Mm. Mm. And they're telling us that management agreed to dispose of the cartons at 50,000 each, which would incur a cost of 560,000 to the salesperson. Now, here we have now what we call that the examiner is testing us on IS2, which is uh, to do with inventory valuation. Mm. Now, 
IS2 says that we value inventory at the lower of cost mm. and it the net realizable value. Yes. So it means that if you have the cost higher than the net realizable value, then you mm. go on to reduce that inventory. Mm. So I just want to uh, use an Excel uh, so that I just demonstrate this to you. Mm. So um, this inventory that we have has expired. As you can see, its cost was mm. 70,000, but it is now 50,000. Mm. Now it's very good for you to, um, to now, since they are now giving us a number of 102, you mm. want to calculate what is the actual mm. value. So mm. actual cost is the 102 times the 70,000. It is 7,140,000. Yes. Now, mm. we also have the net realizable value. Yes. So the net realizable value, mm -hmm. they have given us how much is in the market. Mm. And they have also given us how much we need. Mm. How much we need to pay. So what is 50,000 times? It's 5,100,000. It's 50,000 times 102, which is 5,100,000. Okay, so we have just want us to try it here. Mm. So you're saying this is seven million. Is, mm. is, is, is that what you have or have you used the wrong figure? No, I have that. You have that. Eh? So this is the mm. inventory mm. that expired, isn't it? Mm. But then we have our inventory at year end. Yes. Of how much? Oh, that is six million six hundred and fifty thousand. Six hundred and fifty thousand. Mm. Okay. This one. So we have to adjust mm. this inventory. Mm. Now, this inventory mm. that is expired. We mm. have to value it. Now, currently, it is valued at its cost, which they have given us. But mm. the law tells us that we should value inventory at the lower of the mm. cost and mm. net realizable value. Yes. Now, this is the cost. Okay? Mm. Now, yes. the net realizable value I want you to hear the uh, net realizable value. Now, net realizable value is mm. the amount by which the estimated selling price of the asset exceeds mm. the sum of any additional costs expected to be incurred during the sale. So the net realizable mm. value is what you're going to sell less what you're going to incur in selling. Oh. That's why it's called net realizable value. Mm. So we, based on our question, mm. we are going to incur 
560 as commission to the salesperson. Mm. So th that one has to be mm. adjusted. So it means that this will be this minus that. Are we together? Mm. Yes. So we now we now ask ourselves which one is lower than the other. Of this is the net realizable value. Yes, yeah, so this is the net realizable value, which is lower. So it means mm. that we are going to remove, we are going to less because already there is inventory. What to what? Data six six feet. Okay, that, that's the event we have, but we have a certain inventory which expired to the tune of seven million. Yes. Forty. So we have to remove mm. this cost and add the net realizable value because we are valuing that inventory at net realizable value instead. Do you understand? Mm. Yes. I'm just basically changing the value of the, this inventory that is expired that is within here. I'm removing the 7 million and now ensure that I'm putting the 4 million because it was previously at 714, but now it's going to, to become 4 million 450. Mm. Yes. So then I'll get by new or adjusted closing inventory. which will be this, okay? I already put a, a minus there, so I'll just do a plus and less that. So our new value of closing event will be now at 29,750. I, I, be, I beg for your pardon, how are you getting it? So I'm getting this 36, Minus yes seven mm. one forty mm. plus the four. Oh, okay. I I I thought mm. yes, because uh, according to the principle we've just stated of I asked to. Mm. Hello. Yes. Yes. In my understanding was we after computing the NRV and comparing it with that one of the cost of seven million one forty. I thought we only take which one is lower. So I thought we would get the 36 as the 34. By the way, the figure is uh, 34,650, not 36. It is 34. Yes, 34,650. So I thought we would get the 34,650 um. minus the, the figure that we chose. That's in accordance to the to the to, to I asked to rule. Okay, why? So that we get Okay, I, I want you to, to see something here. They are telling us that event on 31st December was 34,650. And yes. included. So included in this 34,650 is the value yes. of the this expired stock, which is the 7 million. Yes. But we are saying that the 7 million included here is not supposed to be 7 mm -hmm. million. Mm. It's supposed to actually be what we have gotten here, which is the 450,000. Yes. So it means that if I want to adjust this 34,650, that it has a 7 million that's not supposed to be there, I have to first remove the mm. 7 million and then mm. add the right amount. You get it. Okay. Yes, because it was already included. Yes, because of the word included already. Okay. So that is why what I'm going to do is I'm getting the 30, this uh, 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 34,650 minus mm. the 7,140 and I add mm. the 4,540. Oh. You've now understood. Okay. Have you understood? Yes. Yes. So my new inventory will be now valued at 32 
zero fifty thousand. Mm. Yes. So that is the reason. Okay. Okay. Now, if that is the case, um, when it comes to inventory, now, mm. when, when it comes to depreciation, we are basically going to depreciate our assets, mm. which they yes. gave us here, land, motor mm. vehicle, furniture mm. and equipment. Land is not depreciated. So land will be yes. as is, and that's why it doesn't have accumulated depreciation mm. here. Sometimes mm. the examiner combines land and building. Yes. But they will always give you the value of the building. So you only depreciate the building alone. Mm. Yes. But in this case where mm. they did give us building and they only gave us land, we leave out land. Hmm. Now, once we have left out land, we're now going to depreciate these assets. Like I said, we have two methods, reducing balance and the straight line method that are examinable. Now, if they're telling us that 25% um, on reducing balance, it means that if I want to determine the depreciation for the year for motor vehicles, I'm going to get the value of the motor vehicle, which is 120, mm. minus the accumulated depreciation, which is 30. Mm. And then I multiply what I get by the 25%, isn't it? Mm. Then if I want for furniture, since it is straight line, I'll just get this 5% and multiply that mm. 5% with the furniture directly without removing the accumulated depreciation because mm -hmm. it's 5% mm -hmm. on cost. Yes. Then if it is equipment, I'll get 20% mm -hmm. and subject mm -hmm. this 20% on, mm -hmm. they have told me it's reducing balance. So I'll get the cost, which is 24,000, Mm. Minus seven thousand two hundred. Then mm. I'll multiply that by that five percent down by twenty percent down here. Is that okay? Yes, that is okay. Mm. Okay, I'll proceed to the next one. So the next one, okay. the next one says the total salary expense for the year was thirty four. 38.4. Mm. And rent of 4 million was for there. Ended 31st December 2023. Now I'll go back to my mm. trial balance and see do I have salary anywhere? Yes, I have salaries, which is 34,600. Is it anywhere different what they are giving me here? They are telling me the, yes. to the total salary expense for there was. 38 point. 38. But what I have mm. up here is 30 what? It is 36, 600. 30, 34, 600, 600. So it means that yes. there are accrued salaries. Mm. Yes. Salaries that were not settled. Yes. So it means that in my profit and loss, I will recognize the 34 under my expenses. Mm. But when it comes to my statement of financial position, I will have an accrued salaries under my liabilities, which is the difference between the 38 and mm. the 34. Mm. You understand? Mm. So we first treat the accrued salaries under the expenses with less. No. With less. For then... expenses, expenses, we shall just take the 38.4 because they have told you the total salary expense for the year is 34.8.4. So this is all you need in the in the statement. Oh. Of the okay. It, it is only in the statement of financial position where 
you now need to determine the accrued salaries. Mm. Which will be the difference between this and what we because what 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 I've had in mind was mm. we get the other one as per the trial balance and also add now the difference, which is the accrued salaries, but still go back to this figure. So which is okay. Brilliant, brilliant. You get get the back the same thing. So you just use the yes, figure, figure the way figure. it is. Mm. Yes. Mm. So then they are telling us that rent of four million rent. was for mm. they had to that. So let's check and see. So we have rent. This is the twenty three. We have rent here of forty thousand. So here they are telling us that yes. there is a rent of four million for their ending. Mm. Uh, twenty twenty. Yes, the total mm. was that, and the rent was for there. So it means that, remember, this is additional information. Yes. You get it, which is in addition to what you already have here. Yes. So it means that there is... A preferred rent. Yes, because this is December 2023 is next year. So there's a prepaid rent yes. of 4 million, which will appear under your, mm. your assets. So, and it, so it means still that here. this 4 million is to adjust, is adjustable on the 40. So you for the rent expense, you have 36. Okay. You get it, huh? So in my, in my as I'm preparing the profit all laws, Mm. Can I get, for example, the the rent mm. that the rent that was provided for the year, which is forty thousand, mm. and then uh, anyway they didn't say it was included, so we don't we don't treat it there because I was like maybe I I do what I I less it from the other rent, but it, they didn't say anywhere that it was included, so I just take it to the balance sheet. You, you know the fact that they have said rent of four million was for their ended, so you remove this four million from the forty. This is additional information, so it means that you have to. Oh, it. Right. Yes, because oh, if okay. it, yes, if it's not yet in the trial balance, means that they have not yet accounted for it. So it means that okay. It, okay. you need to adjust accordingly. Mm. Yes, so that okay. is what that is what happened. Uh, um. Again. So I'll list it from uh, from the 40 and then also treat it as a current asset. Yes, and then in your PR 